Hi guys, welcome back to Blue Peach Channel. It's Xuan Zhang here, and today I'm going to bring you guys my ProQuest Winning Fist Ride deck tag. Um, before jump into the deck tag part, um, I want to quickly explain why I choose Fist Ride in ProQuest. Um, after some testing, I find that uh, Fist Ride is actually a bit underrated. I think it is still decent in the aggro matchup, and I think it has a very good matchup against Jomai which is one of the majority deck in our um, progress season matter. And the only bad matchup for this deck is Ice Hero, like Lassie, Icelander, and Ohin. So I came up with this new build to deal with those matchup. Uh, in fact, I play into 4 Icelander and 2 Lassie in my progress run, and I only lose to 1 Lassie in the Swiss run. So it shows that this deck can definitely be some of the ice matchup. Enough racing times, let's jump into the deck tap part. So let's start with the equipment. Um, uh, for the headpiece, I play Crown of Providence and Crown of Dominion. I think Crown of Dominion is a really good adaptation to Fist Ride because of the Fist Ride Hero's ability um, it scales really well with the class you can play in a turn. So uh, with the cash in that you can play for free, um, you can check out multiple uh, Fist Ride Hero's ability and make uh, uh, the most of the value of them. Uh, Crown of Providence is always a good card for Fist Ride because sometimes you will just drew into 4 no attack or 4 attention which is not good and Crown of Providence gives you a second chance by changing a card in arsenal or in hand also it, is, uh, it has 2 blocks so it is good against the deck that have very strong hit effect so you can just block with your head piece um, for the chest piece part, uh, I play Tunic and Aether Iron Wave. Tunic is always good in a longer matchup um, because it can generate uh, more resource over time. And it is also good against Ice Hero because they will usually just create one force bite to you to disrupt your turn. So the Tunic helps to uh, helps you to play through the force bite and still do your things. And also you can just pay for the Cronona pick uh, by just a uh, tunic counter, so it is also really good. On the other hand, the Aether Iron Wave, um, it is a craft for the Argo matchup mainly, because uh, it is a battle one equipment, so you can just block for one for free. Um, so you can block a lot of breakpoint attack, like Snatch or um, Mountain Anger, something like that, just buy one card and uh, ch this chest equipment. And also, uh, because the Argo matchups tends to be a short game, uh, you don't have time to generate the uh, resource like Tunic do. So um, the action of this card uh, is says create two resource rate, right? so uh, it can help you to uh, have a big turn with the two extra resource in a short time. So, uh, in aggro matchup, I will just play this if I'm with. For the uh, arm piece, um, I will only play Fence and Quail Hand when I play against Wizard uh, because of the AB1. Uh, usually, I will just play Grabs of the Art Knight because this, strong, this equipment is really strong. Uh, it can block 2, then block 1, so it helps a lot uh, in your in blocking uh, and also the one spreader in fact is also really good in this deck uh, you can just create a wound chain for the arm pass uh, i just play fence and quail hand for the ab in the wizard matchup in most of the other matchup i will just play grabs of the art knight because of the two then one block uh, total three blocks from this equipment and also the one spreader in fact is really strong too. You can just uh, pay the extra resource in the turn to create a wind chain to get value from it. 
the last card, uh, Spellbound Creepers, uh, is a very, very strong card. Um, not only it helps you to gain an extra action point in your turn, so you can play more cards. It also helps you to play around Blizzard and Hypothermia by uh, using a uh, low attack action in an instant speed and gain back your action point by the go again. So you can still swing your Rosetta form no matter what. So the Blizzard and the Hypothermia can stop you from the turn. The next part, I will talk about the cards that make fist right difference from other heroes. The first card uh, is Mojotai, a uh, very strong card, uh, has a very good synergy with the hero ability. The way that I play this card is usually I will just save my hand. For, uh, I will arsenal the Mojotai, save my hand for the break turn. Uh, because the more card you play, the more times you can trigger your hero ability, so you can gain more value from it. <laughs> Second card is uh, Rival in Um Although it's got some limitation, you have to play a non-attention, then an attention card to play this card in if, uh, that have an effect. But um, I think this card is still worth to play, because it's uh, quite easy to do in this deck, honestly. and. It is a zero for five arcane damage. Um, it's also paired very strong with module tie, so yeah, it's definitely a free off card for this deck. The last card is um, the Atlas Shade. Atlas Shade is um, uh, a legendary face wise specialization, so you can just play one copy. But I think this one copy also have this deck unlock. Um, you can just play module tie, then pitch Atlas Shade for the graphs of the Art Knight ability to create four Wind Chain. And also, sometimes uh, the Wind Chain it create not only mean one Arcane damage, because uh, in my deck list, I play a, quite a lot of cards that can minus cost with the number of the Wind Chain. So, it usually represent more than one Arcane damage. And also, it is pretty good into the some decks that want to play a longer game with you because you can pitch it multiple times to gain multiple value from this card. So I think this card is very good in this deck too. The next part is uh, what I call the uh, Action Pawn Package. Um, I play 9 Marvin Sky and two blue data charge and two yellow data charge. Um, the main game plan of this deck is you just play Marvin Sky or Data Charge into a attention card so you gain go you have that attention gain go again or gain back an action point. Then you can swing your Rosetta phone to have the maximum value from your weapon. So um, you must. Uh, I I think this is must nine card uh, for Marvin Sky. Um, the special thing about the lead the charge is that um, it doesn't help your attention gain go gain. Instead, um, it will help you to gain better action pawn. So this card is really good against cards like Blizzard and Hypothermia because they can stop you. Uh, you are not getting go again, you are just gaining an uh, action point back. So I play the extra copy for yellow little charge to deal with the ice hero with uh, bracelet and hypothermia. Um, also, uh, the reason why I play yellow little charge is because uh, I play quite a lot of one cost card in the deck like uh, Beat and Grid, like Fancy Melee's Brew, and also Tomb of Vendel which synergize very well with the yellow little charge too. So I decided to play two copies of this. Um, but each only put, uh, I only put this in in some matchup. Mostly it's nine Marvin Sky and two little charge. The next part, uh, I will call it the target for Marvin Skies. Um, you will Want to play this card after Marvin Sky, then swing Rosetta Front 
because this card doesn't have go again, but this card has a huge value if you can let it gain go again. Um, the first card is the Shin of Skull Form. Uh, I think this card is very good because it's basically do 2 for 7 and 2 for 5 in this right deck. So I think it's a stable card uh, in this deck. Um, then I play 3 red and 3 blue Spellway Assault, which is also really good in this deck. Um, when you play this card with Module Tie, you will gain the extra value because it creates Wind Chain by itself too. So you double the uh, Module Tie trigger by triggering the Hero ability and also triggering this card create Wind Chain effect. Um, also, this card pair very well with the cards that have a uh, minus cost effect with the Wound Chain, like uh, Amplify the Artlike, uh, like Drawn to the Dark Dimension, and also the Wound Flash. So I think this card is very good in this deck also. And sometimes you can just play it in your first turn, then you can have two Wound Chain. Uh, stack into your next turn so you can have a bigger game plan in your next turn the next card i want to talk about is uh, drawn to the dark dimension and um, it has uh, the minus cost by the number of uh, wind chain effect so it's re it is really good into ice a uh, hero like old team uh, and Icelander because they will just create force by on you sometimes uh, after you play my friends guys uh, then the two cost attack you already use up the resource from a blue page so you can swing the Rosetta form afterward but with this card uh, you can actually swing Rosetta form pretty easily it's also help uh, it's also draw a card back, so it's also help you to have a high ceiling turn. Um, as I said before, this why hero's ability is uh, scale with the number of cards you play in a turn really well. So uh, you draw an extra card, which means you have one more chance to check out your hero ability, which means you can gain more value from this. So. I think this is a really good card. Amplify the outline, uh, same with the join to the dot dimension, also have the minus cost effect. So good into I0. And also it's a six attack, so it's work well. Uh, it's also works as a proper when against draw mine. The last card is uh, Fencing Madness Brew. Uh, I just play Brew because I just want the effect from this card, which is due to arcane damage to a target hero. Sometimes um, uh, your opponent ju will just play AB1 against this right because they want to block the wind chain, but not necessarily the second damage from Rosetta Thorn. So this card also helps you to save the Spellbound Creeper, even though you got an off turn, you can just pitch a card, play this, or Tunic play this, so you can save your Spellbound Creeper one more turn. Um, so let's talk about the next part. Uh, I will call it the follow-up attacks. Um, it contains uh, attacks that have go again or can gain go again by itself. So uh, I usually play this card uh, after an attention that can help you gain go again or um, action point back so you can still swing your Rosetta Thorn for 2 and 2. It's also great uh, to play after Morphin Skies uh, some attack, then you play this card, then you can still swing your Rosetta form because it's game, uh, it has go gain. Um, when, uh, let's talk about some cards in this part. Um, the first card I want to talk about is Rune Flash. It's a solid for attack go again, and it also has the minus caused by number of wound chain effect so it's paired really well with cards like spellbreak assault or uh, raffle in wound um you, the way 
that usually you use this card is uh, Marvin's Guy into Spellway Assault into this card because you already already got free Rune Chan from the Spellway Assault and the Hero ability, so it will be a zero cost for Go Again card. Then you can still swing your Rosetta form with just pitching a blue card. And also you can do something like a uh, random no attack, random attack, then rather in room but so you got the ring chain to uh, minus the cost of this card, so you can still play this card, then swing versus the front. Um but I only play two copy because the base cost of this card is too high. Uh, it, sometimes you don't have that much ring chain, so it will be something like a uh, three cost or two cost for attack go again which is not that great so um, I just play two copies in my deck the next card I want to talk about is the swarming Grimfell this is a very strong card in this ride right? um, or the or, uh, or event written on this card can be easily triggered because of the hero ability of this ride right? so it will be a easily 0 for 4 go again cards and also the heat effect of swarming Grimfell is really good in this ride because this ride can deal a lot of arcane damage so your opponent often have to respect that the fact that you can you may play something like with a ruffle and room blood after this card so um yeah you uh, this is a really solid card in this right deck, uh, definitely put it in for every matchup. The last card is uh, Mid and Grid. Um, this card is a bit tricky because you have to deal Arcane Damage in this turn in order for this card to have go again. So the easiest way for this card to have go again is play in the Mojo type back turn or play after Sonata. Uh, because Sonata can naturally deal one Arcane Damage um, if your opponent don't block it, uh, this card will gain go again. And also, this card is really good into aggro matchup because um, in the aggro matchup, your opponent tends to don't block your arcing damage, so it can have the go again pretty easily. And also, um, since it's an aggro matchup, um, the hit effect is also very strong because. Uh, your opponent don't want to block a uh, 4 attack card so um, when it hits it create an extra win chance so it's basically mean 1 cost uh, for 5 attack in an uh, aggro matchup which has go again also so um, it's a really good card in the aggro matchup the next part I want to talk about is the uh, I would say it's a hand size card for this deck um, let's start with Sonata. Uh, Sonata is a card that I always love and hate the most because this card can win you the game by uh, sh uh, by giving you this really strong attack like Swarming Grimfell or Runefresh. But this card can also lose you game because it sometimes just do nothing. Um, but overall, it is still a really strong card in this deck because sometimes you will get extra resource uh, especially after you play cash in so you can pay the resource on this card to make it more stable and make it have a much higher ceiling uh, the next card I want to talk about is uh, Become the Art Eye uh, this is also a very strong card I would say uh, although it doesn't necessarily gain you an extra card. Um, it, it's it help you to find the cards that you want. So uh, often, uh, while you're playing this while you'll find that you have some cards that will stuck in your hand and you can play it. You can just play become the art knight to this deck card and make it become a useful card. So um, the target of this card, uh, I would say mostly if you discard a non-attention and search for attention, uh, most of the time you will search for Swarming Grimfell because it's a zero for four cards. And if you discard attention for non-attention, 
uh, the target will usually be Raffle with Runeblood um, because it's a zero for five card and you have already paid a uh, no attention already. So after you play this card, you just play a uh, attention card that have go again, or you just spell one creeper the Raffle with Runeblood out, and you will got a decent turn. Yeah. So it's um. At worst, it's a zero. Uh, it's a blue pitch and free block card, so you can just block it uh, very effectively. So, yeah, I think this card is really strong too. Um, the next card I want to talk about is uh, Rattlebones. I think Rattlebone is a really good card, but really hard to use. Um, the math behind this card is pretty complicated, but uh, I will put some example out to let you know the power of this card. Um, sometimes you can just block two cards and left this card and blue pitch. Then you can play this card, uh, target Swarming Grown Fail. Then you can play Swarming Grown Fail for free go again. Then you create a force buy. Then you can still swing Rosetta uh, with the one resource left. So it's a two card for eight damage, um, which is above race, I would say. And in the other turns, like the catch in turn, you will have a lot of cards in hand. So um, when you play this card, you, it usually means that uh, uh, it's a two for six go again because you will uh, create one win chain by hero ability by playing this card. Then you will play uh, Swarming Grunfell for zero for four go again. Then that zero for four will also create another wind chain that uh, because you check another hero ability. So it's a two cost for six go again, which is uh, I would say it is above rate also. And one interesting thing about this card is uh, if you have deal arcing damage this turn, you can play this card as instant. So Sometimes uh, you can gain back action point by just playing this card. Then um, swing your Rosetta Thorn. Um, so for example, uh, you play Sonata into uh, you play Sonata. If your opponent take the arcing damage, uh, then you can play uh, attack without go again. Then you can still play this card to target uh, cards like Meet and Greet. Swarming Ground Fell or Rune Flash to gain uh, back your action point, then you can still play that attack, then swing Rose to the front. Uh, that will be a really huge turn uh, accomplished by this card too. So mm, I think this card is pretty hard to use, but it's still a really strong card. Um, the next card is uh, this one on me. Uh, I will only uh, Usually, I put it in deck as a blue pitch free block. Uh, I will just play the card effect when I'm playing against decks like Fly and Dash. But um, I think it is still a really solid card because it can help me to deal with several matchups. And also, it is a free block uh, blue pitch, so yeah, nothing to complain about. Um, it also helps you to draw an extra card, so. As I said before, you can have another chance to check out your hero ability. So yeah, you can do some good things uh, when playing this card too. The next card, uh, Cash In. Uh, Cash In is the new adaptation with uh, Crown of Dominion. Uh, if you play Crown of Dominion, the gold token helps you to play this card for free. So it's a zero cost draw two card which um, fit into the theme of the deck very well. Uh, we want to play as much card in a turn as we can to maximize the uh, value of that gain you can gain from uh, Fist Right Hero ability. So the way I play this card is usually I will Arsenal one uh, Arsenal cash in or Arsenal module type and wait for another card. Uh, um, so I can play a cashy module type big turn. It usually represents at least twenty something damage. So yeah, uh, it helps to 
it helps the deck to have a high ceiling, I would say. So uh, overall, really good card. Uh, sometimes uh, after playing the first copy, uh, I would still play the second copy by pitching two blue cards. So you got two resource back and you drew two card back. Um, it's like a better sieve, I would say, uh, because you are changing two cards into two cards, then you still got two resource left, right? Um, so yeah, sometimes you will just pitch and play this. But usually you will just play the first one for the gold token. With the gold token, yeah. The last card, uh, Tomb of Fendo, uh, it's only a one-off because this card doesn't have go again. You can only use it with um, Spellbound Creepers or Yellow uh, Little Charge or sometimes even Rattle Bones help you to gain the extra action point, right? But uh, the most of the turn, you will just have one action point. You have to have cards that have get go again. So it's just a one-off. Um, but uh, it's still represent a great amount of value with the two cards it draw and with the health you can gain by this card yeah, so uh, although it's a one-off i will say this is a really powerful card if you can have a turn after playing this card the last part um, is the cards that i play for the meta game um, Let's start with the CNC. I think uh, Command and Conquer is really good into any decks that don't run Crown of Providence. It can also work well with Little Charge. So, um, because Marvin's Guy doesn't give generic attack go again, but with uh, Little Charge, you can Little Charge play this card and still swing Rosetta Front to 4 2 and 2. So, I think uh, it's a decent turn that you can play and also this card has a very strong hit effect so uh, other than playing against crown of providence because crown of providence is ultimate counter for this card but uh, in the matchup like against Fi or Alessi um, sometimes they will just keep important cards like arts of war in their arsenal uh, if you play command and conquer they will just be painful because uh, especially for fight, they don't got much free blocks. So, if they want to keep the key card in Arsenal, they will just have to block with the chess piece plus two cards usually. Yeah, so they will lose a turn and lose a turn and pass back to you, something like that. So, it's a really strong card uh, when against deck that don't play Crown of Providence. The next card is Erase Face. I think Erase Face is good against Ice Hero like Icelander and Let's See or even Ohim. Um, I will play this card in the channel leg feature turn so I can still pitch a blue, uh, play an attack deck coming for 6. With this hit effect, uh, your opponent either have to block 2 cards or they will lose the talent. Uh, which is uh, very important for keeping the channel like region around. Uh, either way, uh, they have uh, less chance to keep the channel like region around with the erase face play. So yeah, I think this is really good into the ice hero. The next card, uh, Sing Below. Sing Below is a really good card. It's a zero for four defense reaction, so you can um, play it. I run Pummel really well with this card uh, besides Command Conquer turns, right? Um, and also, uh, this card fit into Fist Ride really well because um, it's worth kind of similar with uh, Crown of Providence. If you drew into 4 no attention or 4 attention, you can just play Sing Below and change one of them and have a second chance. So. It works really well with this Y. Um, the next card is uh, Energy Potion. Uh, I will just play it when I'm against Icelander. The extra two resource is really good against Icelander. Um, at worst, it helps you to prevent two damage, so it means two extra life. 
Um, in most of the turn, uh, if you got two extra resource, you can deal something like four to six damage. Uh, after they try to disrupt you, also. So yeah, I think it's overall a really solid card against Icelander. Uh, pay for two, you can just pay for a for ice thing. You can pay for the force buy, and you can pay for the blister. You can do so much thing with this card against Icelander. The last card, Pummel. Um, Pummel is a really special card, but at the moment. Uh, the last card, Pummel. Uh, Pummel is a really special card I'm working on. Uh, at this moment, I just play it against Icelander. But uh, I think it may also be good in the last C or 5 matchup. Uh, still needs some testing on it. But in the progress, I just played it against Icelander. Um, it, this card synergizes very well with the uh, drawn to the dark dimension because that card is a two cost attack uh, that can draw a card so you can have the extra resource to play pummel and also sometimes uh, you play a morphine sky then you play a four, at four attack uh, that four attack may bait out the sink below for your opponent and um, because they just want to run card block it to do the effective trade and this time you can uh, at this time you can play the pummel uh, to punish them uh, by blocking one so uh, it takes another card from their hands and it's also deal for more damage and it's also help triggering the heat effect from the Marfin sky so yeah it's a really good card in this deck but um, I usually just play it in Icelander matchup. Uh, definitely, we uh, can see that this card can be played in other matchup, but still, some, uh, still needs some testing. So that's all about my main deck and the card choice. Let's move on to talk about some of the matchups and cyber against the meta heroes. The first hero I want to talk about is Icelander. Um, against Icelander, the overall game plan I would play, I played is uh, I would just play very aggressively, and uh, I would just bring one AB. So I would just try to raise them, because um, Fisra is a hero that uh, can make really good value trade uh, by playing uh, enough cards in the turn. So after I find a way. To deal with the Icelander destruction, I find that this deck can actually race with Icelander. The sideboard, uh, the sideboard part is uh, I will side out the Crown of the Minion and the Cash In because it is too painful to get punished in a Cash In turn by Hypothermia and Channel Lake Fitches. So uh, rather than taking the high risk, high reward path, uh, I will just play Crown of Providence that can game uh gain me two life and also provide the consistency uh, to the deck the chest part uh definitely tunic the tunic resource can help you to deal with uh, um a lot of situation that Icelander given to you uh, most of the turn they will just give one force by to you so if you got the tunic counters up you can swing your Rosetta front with the tunic re resource and also sometimes they will just corner pick you so you can just uh, get the resource from tunic and pay for the card so you have uh, you still have your full cross hand and for the hand piece uh, I will play the uh, fencing quill hand for the AB1 um, you can definitely play the effects sometimes, but you have to make sure you have give enough pressure, or that is the killing turn. Uh, if not, I will just keep it AB1 and yeah, I will just block some arcane damage with this. And also, I won't play uh, this round on me in this matchup because the broken is already enough, so 
we only want the useful blue. Uh, I won't play CNC because uh, they can use their arsenal card in your turn pretty easily, so CNC do nothing to them pretty much. So, uh, and the uh, sink below, although they do have some physical damage, but uh, sometimes in the channel like feature turn, you have to pay one to play sink below, which is not ideal. So, I just side out them. Rattle bones, um, they will block your arcane damage pretty oftenly, so you can have the extra action prone from rattle bones. Also, uh, this card costs two, which is uh, uh, this card costs two, so um, against decks like Icelander, uh, you have to pay save the resource for other stuff. So I um, I don't think we have the extra two resource to resource to play this card. And finally, I will actually sign out one copy of Yellow Marvin Sky because um, sometimes uh, your opponent can just punish you hard with the hypothermia and raise it after you play Marvin Sky. Uh, I already signed in all the little charge that can play against both two cards. So yeah, I, I think the action pawn department is enough. So I just signed out one Marvin Sky to avoid that to get punished by the uh, hypothermia and blizzard. Um, the key things that you have to keep in mind in this matchup is uh, to play around the minus cause effect attack like drawn to the dark dimension or amplify the ally or even run flash. Um, because most of the turn they can just create one frostbite to you. Um, so if you uh, save some wound chain from the last turn, you can definitely still do a Marvin Sky um, into a uh, either drawn to the dark dimension or amplify the outline and still able to swing your Rosetta. Um, the some very special card I want to talk about in this matchup is Eport, uh, Erase Face, and Pummel. Erase Face is a good card when they try to put down their channel like widget and keep it in the field because uh, you can just pitch a brew to play Erase Face even they have a channel like widget and they have to block two cards to have the talent back so they can keep the channel leg or they have to um, no block the erase phase to have their turn so they don't got the talent so they can keep the channel leg widget yeah, either way is good for you so i think this attack is good into icelander um energy potion uh always a good card against icelander the two extra resource can help you to pay uh, for the heat effect of the FSI swing, it can help you to pay for the Blizzard or sometimes you can just pop it for the Rosetta swing. Um, so I think it's a really good adaptation to Fist Ride against Icelander. Um, sometimes you can just bell ban in the opponent turn to play this out with your Tunic resource so you can save your Action Pawn in your own turn. But that is that's, uh, just a minor. Uh, that's not the usual case. But yeah, you can just play like that. Um, Pomo, Pomo is actually a really good card against Icelander after I test. Um, uh, it because of two reasons. One is your opponent doesn't expect you to play Pomo in this deck for this matchup, so it can punish them really hard for blocking wrong. Um, the second thing is that the uh, pummel works really well with uh, the Marvin Sky because Marvin Sky gives uh, heat effect to the next attack. So if you pummel uh, that attack, and uh, not only they have to discard card, you can gain some wound chain back from the on heat effect of Marvin Sky, which is really good for your next turn for the minus card effect attack. So yeah. Pummel is definitely a good card against Icelander. I win I win most of the game because this card exists. 
So that's all for the Icelander Park. Let's move to the next hero. The next hero I want to talk about is Ohim. Um, I think Ohim is one of the hardest matchup for Fizz Rai because uh, they can either block really well because they got a lot of brew and yeah, your arcane damage can came through, or they can play really aggressively with the CNC pummel and also spinal crush, which which um stop you getting a full cast hand to play, or you just can play cast because of the spinal crush. Um, so um in the Ohem matchup, I will just um focus more on building up a big turn to get through the uh, block that they have. If they play really aggressively, I will just try to chain uh, value chain with them. Um, I think you can win the value chain against Ohim because uh, this deck has a lot of uh, gain value card built inside. So um, if Ohim trying to race you, I think this deck can still win most of the time. Especially with the um, new class that I play for the Ice Matchup. Um, for the Cyber part, uh, I would just play Crown of Providence for the two blocks. And it also helps you in the CNC pummel turn. If you feel that is coming, you can just block, the, block with the Crown of Providence and change your Arsenal card into a hand so you don't call it don't got punished that hard by the CMC pummel. Um, with that being said, I also side in, uh, side out cash in, and it will be a lot of matchup. So uh, tunic is more, uh, tunic is better in this matchup, and also the tunic resource can help you to get through the frost spike created by winter snail, which is still available in the progress season, and also slide mine. Yeah. Uh, handpiece definitely grabs of the art line blocking value really good so yeah you can just block uh, really well with this equipment and still have return yeah um for the main deck part I will silo uh, this one on me because um uh, same as I cylinder, you have uh, you have uh, enough blue card already, so you don't need this card. And we won't play CNC because of the crown of seed is do nothing to owe him. Um, we won't play pummel because they got a lot of defense reactions, so sometimes uh, they can punish you really hard for the greediness of playing pummel. And Uh, actually, with side out, yeah, so, um yeah, so I think that's all the card that I will side out. Um, it's over 60 deck, but because you are playing against Ohim, sometimes you need to expect them. They have chance to fatigue you. So uh, you get over 60 card, you get uh, the extra card to deal more damage to them. Yeah. Um, e part, um, I find it's actually pretty good against Ohim because sometimes they just uh play spinal crush then you can have a turn right because you either broke two cards and you got two cards left which is not ideal in uh, fives right so uh, sometimes i would just block three cards then put down the e port and pass my turn to save it for the break turn that i play yeah the extra resource always help in the break turn um I think below is also a good card. Uh, during the poker season, uh, I still have to deal with the winter snow. So yeah, 
when cup blocking winter snow is really important against Ohim. It's actually pretty much the same when you play against Icelander. You have to play around your minus cost attack really well to get through the slight mic. And you have to keep your tunic account uh, tunic counter really well so you can just threat your opponent uh, if they broke with slight might you can still tunic and swing your rosetta um, overall you just want to keep uh, the module tie or rather rumbut in your arsenal and wait for a big turn but sometimes they can just play cnc pommel into you so you have to be aware of that and um, yeah, block with your crown of providence or use your powerful cards in your arsenal before their tunic counter can, uh, goes up to three. Yeah, that's pretty much for the Ohim matchup. The next matchup I want to talk about is Dash. Um, since Dash is still a very strong hero and uh, Dash is still a majority meta hero in Kong Kong, so I have to prepare for that. The overall game plan against Dash is depends on um, what item they are starting off. If they are starting off Tanko Plunder, you usually want to block those counter out. So after they use up all the counter, you can start trade back with them. Um, if they are just playing chamber, um, you can just play normally against them and wait for the uh, module type turn, something like that. Um, the sideboard against dash, I, um, the sideboard against dash, uh, I will side out the crown of dominion, uh, which means I will side out cash in also because cash in is just brought for two. Um, is and I think we need the block for two from the crown of providence um, and it can also help you to change your card from your arsenal to your hand so you can have an extra free board in a turn so sometimes you can just fatigue the dash with that way and for the chess piece part uh, i will play a for iron wraith um, because the matchup should be a short matchup so you just want the two extra resource quickly and you can block one extra and the arm piece uh, because we are not playing against uh, wizard yeah, we just play grabs uh, good equipment that block for free and in the main deck park i will side out outline shade and energy potion because they doesn't block uh, against dash you may get punished really hard if you choose some card that doesn't block so i just side out them and I will side out Pummel because sometimes uh, if you play against our aggro dash, you may have to fatigue them. So you don't want too much to broadcast in your deck. And also uh, in the fat in the fellow chase situation, you um, usually don't got the two extra resource to pay Pummel. So I will just side out that. Um, CNC, I think it is just weak into Crown of Providence, which Dash will definitely play uh, the equipment against Fist Rise, so I will just side that out. Um, I will side out the yellow need the charge also because I think the action pawn department is already enough with this 11 card and also it's brought for two, so I will just side out that. And the last card, uh, I will side out. Tomofindo because sometimes you just have to block a lock you can utilize the effect of Tomofindo really well because you have to save cards in order to gain life back but in some situation you just can't save cards so I will just side that out um, the things you want to do into dash is just normal fist rise stuff you just want to muffin sky into attack into reset front and some uh, sometimes you will have the module tie or raffle big turn um the special things against dash is the erase face it is definitely a 
very good card against Dash because if it's hit, uh, all the cards of your opponent lose class, which means they can boost to have go again or they can have the pistol to have go again by the chamber. So, um, if you play this card, the Dash usually just brought two cards and they give a turn back to you. So, um, that's all about Dash. So let's move on to the next matchup. The next matchup I want to talk about is Fi. Um, I think against Fi, of the overall game plan is you just play very aggressively, uh, and yeah, you just trade with them like a uh, face right. <laughs> what face right usually do. But the sideboard is a bit different from the dash part um, because uh, I think Fi has less strong heat effect and um, I think you have to have the ceiling in order to win the race against Fi. So I will play Crown of Profit, uh, Dominion and cash in so you can have the crazy big turn against Fi. And also, uh, this is a quick matchup, so I will just play the Aether Iron Wave, and yeah, I will not play AP against Fry. Um, actually, um, when you play against Fry, the free blocks are pretty important, uh, which Fist Ride decks has a lot of free block cards, so um, it has a natural advantage uh, against Fry, um, which means you have to side out also the no block cards because uh, sometimes you have to block the big turns uh, if they ask of war or spreading frame you don't want them to gain too much value for the sort of wound at the last so um, you just try to block the attacks out even if they play mass of momentum you have to block uh, uh, their attack also so you don't have you don't want something that doesn't block uh, in your deck and for the same reason we side out a uh, little charge uh, and also the tomb of window um, because you usually have to block some cards so um, these cards are not good in this matchup and I will also side out pummel uh, even though I think pummel may be good in the fire matchup but I still don't got enough tests to prove it, so I just side it out, and I will not play Erase Face. Um, Every Face is a interesting card when against Fi, um, but uh, it can stop the Bray to hack go again, or it can stop Phoenix Frame getting one attack. But uh, a good Fi can play around this very well, so. I don't think um, it is a strong enough card to play against Fi. It's also just brought for two, so uh, I will just side it out. Um, so let's uh, then uh, and then I will also side out the amplify the outline because um, you will swing your Rosetta front a lot, so you can s keep your Rune Chen. Uh, uh, between turns, so sometimes you can just play uh, it in the maximum value, so I will just side it out. And so, uh, more in depth game plan is uh, you try to play this round or me to counter their big turn. Uh, if they save their arsenal for quite a while, you know, you should know that that is that may be. A key card like out of four or spending frames that they are just waiting for opportunity so you can always play this round on me to counter something like that um, it's usually good against fight uh, because uh, even they draw a card uh, that card usually just brought two and if they play next turn it will minus one attack so yeah, it's overall a good card against Fi. Um, definitely will play that effect also in Fi, not only just for the Blue Pitch free broke. 
And CNC is also a good card into five because five don't run, don't run Crown of Providence. So, um, and also they want to keep the key cards like Art of Four or Spreading Frame, something like that, in their arsenal. So it can punish them really hard. They got a lot of two bros, so they can block this card very effectively. Basically, they have to give up the arsenal card or they have to give you a turn. So it's a really good card against Fi. Um, yeah, you just uh, for the uh, in-game part, you just want to uh, do fist rise stuff to get maximum value from all your cards. And you just want the setup. Uh, you make you can arsenal cash in or uh, um, module tie and wait for the other card to play a big turn so you can have crazy value on that turn and yeah you can just win because uh, they can block really well uh, they can block arcing damage really well and so yeah you you have natural advantage on that so that's all up about five and let's talk about Jomai at last. Um, this deck against Jomai is pretty much a free win, I would say, because this deck got a lot of way to counter Jomai. Um, first, we got six proper, um, which can stop their turn really well, and also. Um, you deal a lot of arcane damage, which Joma usually build around red cards, so they can block the arcane damage really well. And also, you can just Marvin Skies into attack to uh, kill their dragon. Uh, it's also trigger the Marvin Sky hit effect, even if you attack a dragon. So you will gain the extra rune champ back. And yeah, they can block with the arcane damage. Uh, they can deal with the arcane damage really well so uh, they will leak a lot of light total while you are doing with their dragon um, so yeah I would say it is a pretty much a once a, a pretty one-sided matchup I would say um, for the cyber part um, uh, I will just uh, play crown of dominion with uh, Kashin to have the crazy ceiling turn because uh, Jomai doesn't give you a lot of pressure with their attacks so you can just happily seek with your combo piece and wait for the big turn and um, in the chest piece I will choose Tunic because I think it will be a kind of a long game because your attack have to deal with the dragon so actually you deal less damage uh, but yeah, also you, you can have, uh, although you can have your arcing damage bad, but still the lot matchup will be uh, a little bit longer than you think. So I think Tunic is good in this matchup. And I will play Grabs in this matchup. Um, even though they have burned them all and a uh, dragon that can deal arcing damage, um, I still think the armor is more important. And yeah, I don't think they're... Uh, arcane damage is a uh, danger enough for me to have to bring a uh, arcane barrier. For the main deck part, uh, I will just uh, not play sink below because I want the deck to be more uh, pure with non attention and attention. So yeah, I just want to side all the cards that are not this two type then I can have my big turns every turn same with the pummel um, and I will also side out the little charge uh, I think night Marvin's guys and two little charge is already enough into uh, the Jomai deck and uh, two more things though I will side also um, Actually, I think um, this card is kind of debatable. Um, I sometimes want to put this card in, but yeah, uh, I think the way you, you don't need this card 
to win against Shomai and this card sometimes can stuck in your hand or arsenal for a while so I just don't want this card for the uh, for the consistency and this one on me um I saw this card because I will consistently kill the dragon so uh it is hard for Joe Mai if I, uh, to go wide if I kill the dragon consistently so I don't think this card is useful in this matchup and also the blue card is enough I want more red card I, in this matchup because they tends to uh, some of the Joe Mai tends to block a lot so I have to have more red cards to deal with that and the last card I will uh, side out E-Port um, I don't want this card get stolen from the uh by the Joe Mice, the gold dragon, I forgot the name. And this card is not that useful in the match shop also, so yeah, I just side out. And the card remaining is the like the proper and all the room bay attack card that can help me to kill the dragon pairing with Marvin Sky so I can get the most value out of. Yeah, I think it is a really one-sided matchup yeah so uh, if you play fist right against a joma you can win pretty easily so i think that's all of my um deck tech here uh, if you want to know more about other matchup uh, you can ask me on twitter or uh, un you can leave a comment below so i can answer you um I will post my Twitter link, uh, both my Twitter link and my team Twitter link underneath. So please uh, follow us. Um, we will update some content. This is the end of my dead tech video. Thank you for watching. If you have any further questions, feel free to comment below. We will try to answer your questions. Please like the video, subscribe our YouTube channel. We will update the next deck tech video soon yeah thank you for watching again and um, see you next time bye bye